thank everyone for joining my presentation this morning and this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you might be around the world. Today I'm going to talk about characterizing the effects of windshields on head-up displays, where we look at new demands for visual inspection. My name is Matt Schultz, and as Elishba mentioned, I'm the automotive business leader here at Radiant Vision Systems. My experience spans a decade of metrology applications, where I work directly with automotive customers around the world to apply Radiant products to measure and inspect quality of displays and lighting systems. I lead projects at all levels of the supply chain, coordinating teams to address specific industry challenges. A little bit about Radiant. We're a light and color measurement company, and we've been designing and manufacturing scientific-grade solutions for nearly 30 years. Today, I'm happy to share our experiences in head-up displays, particularly considerations for choosing a vision system for HUDs and the unique inspection solutions that our team have developed to evaluate the windshield effect on HUD quality. Today's agenda will cover the windshield as a display, components of a windshield HUD, defects introduced by the windshield glass, measurement specifications, visual inspections used to characterize windshield effects, followed by inspection equipment, choosing a vision system to improve HUD testing, We'll go through a case study that we worked with a strategic partner on and then run into solution summaries. So let's start by discussing head-up display trends and looking at the windshield or the windscreen as a component of the display system. When you think about it, the most useful place to put a display in the car is in the windshield. Instead of having to look down at the dashboard or console, virtual images on the windshield give the driver critical information where they're already looking. Because of these safety implications, the HUD market is growing. If you haven't driven or ridden in a vehicle with a HUD, it's only really a matter of time. At this point in time, we're close to 100 model year 2021 vehicles that feature head-up displays. And what's really interesting is at least five of those are in the augmented reality HUD feature. HUDs are also evolving from conventional systems like we see here to where the virtual images are fixed in a place or at a limited projection distance. We're entering, entering an era of augmented reality, or AR HUDs, and as I mentioned, about five of those are currently in mass production right now in 2021 vehicles. Shown here in this example is a Panasonic automotive AR HUD that they showcased and unveiled at the CES show in January of this year. In AR HUDs, virtual images have various variations in shapes, positions, and depth, and they can change dynamically based on the driver's perception that they are projected in line with the objects of the various environments. This improves driver awareness and provides real-time input, like alerts when a pedestrian is crossing the street or when you need to turn right or left. The more information on the windshield, the more we can keep our eyes on the road and stay in tune with the changing environment. Using windshield as a display is a great step toward improving safety while still having that person be focused at the wheel. Using more of a windshield as a display gives us more space to project information at any point in the driver's field of view. Following human vision, the size of the HUD is defined by the horizontal and vertical field of view in degrees. The larger a HUD field of view, the more information, of course, we can view in the windshield from various vantage points as the driver. Here on the left is an illustration of how fields of view are increasing to accommodate the depth and positions of AR HUDs. On the right, we see the field of view represented as an area of the windshield where the driver sees the virtual image. This is great for the driver, but from a manufacturing standpoint, we have other concerns. With more of the windshield being used as a display, it has an increasing influence on the appearance of the projected images. Let's take a look at the components of a windshield HUD to see how the windshield really fits into the whole process. There are several elements that can impact the visual quality of a HUD. The first, of course, is the projector itself. It looks something like this. Depending on the technology used, in this example, we're showing a DLT projector from Continental. The projector sits inside the dashboard of the driver's side and emits light towards the windshield to produce a virtual image. For the sake of this presentation, we're going to assume the measurement examples that we're showing uh, meet all quality and safety requirements. So we're going to focus basically on the issues that are visible from the HUD to the effects of the windshield, but not on the projector itself. 
the light from the trajectory is reflected back to the driver's eye. The volumetric area in which the driver can see the full field of view of the HUD projection is called the eye box. The intention is that the complete HUD projection appear accurate when viewed from any point within this box. While the projection is reflected to the driver's eye, the virtual image is perceived as appearing at some distance in front of the vehicle. For conventional HUDs, we generally see that at 2.5 meters, and for augmented reality, we see things like 7, 10, and beyond meters of information being projected. The windshield acts as an optical component of the HUD system, and it takes a particular composition to enable virtual images to be projected through the glass correctly. Windshields aren't just one solid piece of glass, though, but two pieces of glass bonded together. Glass is laminated to ensure it won't shatter if impacted. The layers are bonded with one or more plastic interlayers with further cushion impact or provide various benefits. A common interlayer is a PVB, and there could be additionally integrated heaters, de-icers, rain sensors, as well as other sensors and coatings applied to the windshield, things that we're seeing in some of the higher-end vehicles today. It's important to consider the number of layers, the thickness of each one of these layers, the angle of the layers in the windshield when we begin to characterize their effect on the HUD projection. Windshield layers must be formed in such a way to direct light from the projector so that multiple light rays come together to form a clear image. This is tricky, though because the light received by the driver's eye is actually being reflected from both the inner and outer surfaces of the windshield glass, which are separated by the interlayer region. This is where another important windshield characteristic comes in, which is the wedge angle. To ensure that the light reflected from multiple surfaces of the windshield are directed appropriately to the driver's eye, a small wedge angle is introduced, often by changing the thickness of the PVB layer. With the appropriate angle, we see here that the light rays illustrated by the green and red arrows in this image accurately reflect from the inner and outer surfaces of the windshield and come together as a single clear image to the driver's eye. Like any optical component, though, the integrity of the windshield composition can have a significant impact on how light is projected. If the layers and the formation of the windshield are not accurate, this can impact the visual quality of the HUD. Here we're showing examples of common defects introduced by windshields. On the left, we have ghosting. This is an extreme example, of course. And this is where the driver sees duplicates or sometimes triplicates of the virtual image. This is caused when light rays from the HUD projector are not reflected from the windshield layers at the proper angles. Now on the right-hand side, we see the distortion defect. Distortion comes in many shapes. This image provides an example of what's called the horizontal smile defect. These defects are caused by the curve of the windshield impacting reflections of light from the windshield layers. So let's look at how ghosting occurs. If the wedge angle between the glass and the layers of the windshield is inaccurate, the reflections of the light from the inner and outer surfaces of the windshield can cause perceptions of a double image. Here we can see, as the light rays from the HUD projector reflect from the windshield, the outer reflection does not align with the inner reflection as received by the eye. The images appear to be separate, with the outer reflection appearing to be dimmer or sort of a duplication. The result is the primary image and a ghost image. Technically, though, there's always a ghost image in the HUD because there's always a reflection from the outer surface of the windshield. The goal is to ensure, though, that the appropriate wedge angle is applied so that the ghost image aligns exactly with the primary image to give the appearance of a single clear image to the driver. Now, let's look at an example of how distortion is caused. Windshields have a slight curvature in both horizontal and vertical dimensions to fit the vehicle design and improve aerodynamics. Two methods are generally used to form glass curvature. Gravity bending is one, and press bending is the other. Both require heating the glass temperatures above 600 degrees Celsius. During gravity bending, the heated glass is curved using its own weight to produce cross curvature or sagging in a mold. To ensure layers of laminated windshield match, the sheets of the same windshield are bent together in the same mold. Press bending uses molds to press each other's sheets into the desired shape. Because this process is very precise, the sheets of glass are formed individually and later paired. 
Despite many controls in place to manage glass formation, anomalies can still occur, though. Curved sheets can warp or sag during heating and subsequent cooling, causing optical defects like distortion. In HUDs, the perception of defects become more likely as the HUDs field of view increases. A virtual image projected across a larger area of the windshield is more likely to be influenced by windshield curvature. This can make distortion a particular challenge for AR HUDs, giving their fields of view and virtual Im image sizes continue to increase. There are many well-documented visual inspection methods for ensuring HUD quality. Now, measurement specifications at the windshield stage are becoming increasingly rigorous. The effects of the windshield on a HUD are characterized by projecting a known pattern of dots or lines through the windshield and measuring deviations in a virtual image. This can be done using a HUD projector or other means like a light plate. The important part is that the projection sent through the windshield is a golden sample free from defects so that the defects are isolated to the windshield. On the top right is an example test image that is projected through the windshield. Below, the resulting image exhibits distortion. Automated visual inspection is used to evaluate the resulting pattern. The solution we're showing here includes imaging and analysis software and often robotics to control the entire process without human intervention, of course. A vision system captures an image of the virtual image and the software measures the location and the deviations of the points in the pattern compared to the original. There are specific measurements needed and, of course, specific calculations used to characterize each of these defects to ensure meaningful data that can guide the changes to the windshield fabrication process and looking for adjustments to the wedge angle if necessary or adjusting the physical mold or the glass bending process, all things that need to be considered. Windshield HUDs have their own set of test specifications. In many cases, OEMs provide detailed specifications to the windshield suppliers that must be incorporated into testing. Alternatively, a supplier may look to establish their own test specifications to help guide corrections in glass formation process. We've spoken to two common windshield defects so far, right? Distortion and ghosting. These defects can manifest in many different ways. So several unique mathematical formulas are needed to characterize all possible geometries within each defect category. For example, each shape of the distortion can take both vertically and horizontally across the test pattern must be evaluated using its own method and formula. In this table, we list a few qualities that distortion defect may be evaluated for. Horizontal and vertical size, horizontal and vertical trapezoid shape, as illustrated by the defect in the second row you can see here, and of course other qualities. A unique calculation is used to evaluate each quality and output at a data point. In the end, a complete distortion evaluation for HUD glass inspection may require up to 20 unique calculations to evaluate the total visual quality and account for a range of potential variations of distortion within the projected test image. When we add ghosting and other defects to the analysis, there could be upwards of 50 calculations required to complete the inspection at any given point. Remember when I mentioned the IBOS a few slides ago? The HUD should be visible from any point inside this area to account for a range of any possible eye position. And given that drivers are of all different heights and shapes, this is a really important inspection criteria. And you've probably guessed that we need to run the same inspection routine multiple times. So each eye box, each position, each test is really critical. The test specifications usually identify several eye boxes locations where the camera must be positioned to evaluate the HUD. And as I've mentioned, as many as 20 locations could be utilized. This means taking an image of a test pattern at each point, then running all the specifications and calculations for each defect across each image. In other words, a complete windshield characterization across the eye box could actually require hundreds of calculations in total. Not only is there a lot of complexity here, but there's also other considerations to keep in mind as we look to define our measurement equipment. Like how can we position our vision system consistently at each eye box test point, and how can we handle a massive amount of data needed to complete the characterization process? This is where the choice of an inspection equipment can significantly impact testing efficiency. The goal is to solve as many requirements as possible out of the box, honestly, in a single solution. At the fundamental level, the basic requirements for a HUD inspection are an optical measurement device, 
looking for the most effective way to acquire an image uh, through a measurement system and capture the entire HUD projection in a single acquisition to evaluate all various test points within the scene. Then, of course, we need something that can analyze the image and perform the required geometric calculations, which, of course, is the component side, the software component side. Automotive applications have long relied on traditional machine vision systems for visual inspection, like checking the assembly or the physical qualities of a part. In the early days of head-up display, though, these systems were also applied for evaluating virtual images with some minor customization. But things have changed, and now when we think of augmented reality HUDs and the extensive list of tests and specifications, there are new considerations for choosing vision systems for HUD inspection. First, the field of view is something we need to think about. We talked about how AR HUDs are pushing field of view specifications from less than 5 degrees horizontal up to 20 degrees in some implementations. And honestly, the future is going to push us to even larger displayed areas. As the field of view increases, it becomes more difficult for imaging systems to maintain precision to detect each visual element while capturing a large or even larger area through a single image acquisition. The solution to this is higher imaging resolution. Higher resolution applies more granularity over larger areas without losing the ability for the imaging system and the software to distinguish small constituent features shown in this example. Traditionally, machine vision cameras provide enough resolution to complete the inspection quickly without bogging down processes. Though there are sometimes there are issues with large amounts of data. An average resolution for a traditional machine vision system is generally below 20 megapixels. When capturing a large area, the data per element actually ends up being quite limited. An imaging system developed for metrology applications, though, attempts to maximize the resolution because their applications usually require the ability to precisely measure very small values. For instance, this imaging photometer is developed to measure the light from the displays, which is evaluated at a pixel and subpixel base. For this reason, a system like this provides resolutions often above 20 megapixels, and an example here is showing a 43 megapixel solution. With this resolution, we can get much more clarity to register the constituent element of the pattern in order to do subsequent measurements. The difference in imaging of ghost patterns are illustrated here in the slide, where the lack of detail needed in the machine vision system measurements to distinguish a ghost from the primary pattern. The imaging photometer is capable to register both as a unique element. Only here, we can apply necessary calculations for ghosting. So you have enough resolution to really discern each one and the separation to understand the severity of the ghosting found within the distribution or projection. Setting up a windshield inspection in traditional machine vision software interfaces is also incredibly difficult. Typically, a machine vision package contains useful universal tools that can be applied to a range of visual inspection tasks. These tools can be customized to an extent, for instance, setting an anchor point in an image and gauging the distance between two points in a pattern. Of course, this is fairly basic. This can be arduous through more complex setup processes, though. And if the software is not trained to adhere to these complex patterns, the test pattern being projected end up being difficult to be characterized through the windshield. As required to evaluate this image of horizontal smile distortion, the software needs to understand whether the dots in a row appear above or below the registration line, and to measure the distance either up or down from each dot to the line. Maximum, minimum, the average distance measure, these are all needed. Then, of course, the required calculations need to be applied to each of the corresponding data points. But traditional machine vision software doesn't have the required calculations for windshield head testing built in. At most, these systems will be able to output raw coordinates and measurement values. But from there, the manufacturer is left to develop their own method of applying calculations by building formulas into a secondary platform. There's a significant cost in terms of time and resources to manage this custom inspection process, and it's not easy to adapt processes for new inspection routines. Also, honestly, at the end of the day, the burden of understanding and ensuring accuracy of these formulas and the output data is entirely on the manufacturer. The difference between adapting traditional machine vision software for HUD windshield characterization versus applying a software platform developed specifically for HUD measurements is significantly huge. 
Measuring multiple points across the eye box has its own unique challenges as well. The cameras must be repositioned relative to the virtual image several times for each windshield evaluation. Automating these movements typically requires robotics or actuators, which have the benefits of maintaining position consistency from inspection from point to point. The challenge comes in when we consider the imaging system's optics. Adjusting the imaging position usually requires changing the optical focus and the depth of the field to ensure a clear image. This means adjusting the image's lens setting for each new position. For automated inspection, we expect the imaging system to be moving continuously. Manually setting the focus and aperture at each point is not practical. It negates the efficiency benefits of automation and can introduce several errors. Imaging systems with electronic lenses and autofocus options ensure that the correct focus and aperture are set for each inspection point. Any variability from these tolerances can be quickly adjusted via software to correct the lens remotely. With full electronic control of the camera, eye box position changes can be fully automated and maintain imaging precision from point to point. Along with electronic lenses, there are other considerations for automating windshield testing. First, the software should be capable of running several analysis steps in succession to capturing all the data and apply all the calculations for each test, test image at each inspection point. It's all about tack time reduction. If we're looking at integrating a camera and inspection process with robotics or control equipment, the software should also offer some kind of API. This is a key for syncing all of the equipment to run on multiple tests and inspection points in a controlled, logical, and continuous process. The API can be used to control the image capture with the camera, electronic lens settings after repositioning, timing actions with the robotic movement, initiating inspection sequences at each inspection point, and of course, communicating data to several computer outputs. When you do the math, if you're looking at doing 40 or more calculations at each inspection point across, say, 20 inspection points, that's a lot of data for just a single windshield. Being able to process this data and communicate the data efficiently is another key capability of vision systems used for this application. Traditionally, machine vision systems capture and apply inspections in series, so each distinct analysis compounds the amount of data that is processed. Because of the magnitude of the windshield characterization data, traditional machine vision systems can only process and output limit batches of data at a time. The amount of data captured throughout multi-point windshield inspection often requires manual throttling or other operations to readdress data output from the machine vision system in order to continue the inspection. Beyond numerical data, there's also the images to consider. If measurement images need to be saved for reporting or traceability, machine vision just isn't as effective as a solution when there are so many various data points. Memory on these systems is limited, and there simply isn't enough capacity to output both thousands of data points and hundreds of files per inspection to the PC. For the most efficient inspection, a vision system that can capture one image for analysis, for instance, a distortion test pattern for all distortion evaluations, and apply multiple analyses simultaneously on that image will greatly reduce the burden of data on the overall system. There are a few other considerations to make when choosing a vision system, though. Having a single system that addresses any potential head testing requirement out of the box is simply a way to future-proof your inspection process. Photometric measurements of light and color is equally important as geometric measurements for for performing comprehensive HUD evaluation. In fact, there's an SAE standard that focuses on the methodology recommended for light measurements of these devices. And it, it basically states that a photometer or colorimeter is required for HUD testing. This kind of device uses mistraceable calibration to ensure a photopic response to the light that adheres to universal standards for light measurements, based on standards used in vision perception, of course. Like traditional machine vision systems, an imaging photometer can evaluate the spatial positions of points and calculate geometric positions and distances. Unlike traditional machine vision, though, imaging photometers can additionally measure important qualities that have projection, including brightness, color, uniformity, contrast, and sharpness via MTS, modulation transfer function. 
Imaging photometers also add benefits for evaluating ghosting defects because we capture the luminance values of the primary and the ghost image. An imaging photometer can accurately identify the ghost or even multiple ghosts for subsequent measurements, which is a massive benefit over traditional methods. And as a final consideration, the one that can make the biggest difference is choosing equipment from a supplier experience in HUD measurement solutions. This is about working with a team who can speak your language, speak to the industry's language, and speak to your customer who understands the standards for HUD testing and is also familiar with the OEM specifications for HUD windshields. This removes a huge burden from the manufacturers that generally they're faced with developing a HUD windshield test solution on their own. If we take all these considerations into account, we're not only looking to optimize current HUD testing, but also safeguard testing capabilities into the future. The whole future-proof vision system for HUD windshield testing might have these characteristics. This system addresses our field of view, our analysis complexity, robotic movement, automation, and data processing challenges. It also gives manufacturers some secret weapons, photometric measurements to meet any HUD measurement requirements, and of course, the established knowledge of a HUD solution provider to ease the burden of general development and implementation. The benefits of this fully featured vision solution was recently demonstrated in the customer project where I personally had the opportunity to work with CP Industries on their HUD windshield test fixtures. And just to introduce CP a little bit, so this is a company headquartered out of Indiana. They're a full service tooling integrator who builds turnkey test fixtures for automated automotive glass, trim, thermoform, injection moldings, and many other components. They've been supplying these solutions to major automotive manufacturers for nearly 75 years. Because CP already had a history testing automotive glass when HUDs emerged, it was only natural progression that CP would begin to incorporate HUD testing requirements into windshield testing. At first, windshield test requirements were limited, and CP was able to meet the inspection demand sufficiently with traditional machine vision cameras. But as requirements mounted and became more complex, it was clear HUDs had outgrown these vision systems capabilities. CP began investigating new vision systems in order to continue to provide turnkey automated solutions that met all specifications for windshield HUD testing really out of the box. The challenges that CP industry faced using traditional machine vision inspection equipment seriously limited their efficiency. Because there was little memory space on the machine vision systems themselves, CP couldn't apply a complete set of inspection tools for each inspection. Continuous automated inspections also required data throttling to parse out chunks of the data at a time. Because the system simply couldn't handle the amount of measurement data constantly being acquired, and this data processing didn't even address the calculations CP needed to do to meet the customer's HUD testing requirements. Because their vision software didn't offer sufficient tools, these calculations had to be applied post-process as formulas for large data tables in Excel. The complexity of these calculations required a deep understanding of the requirements and serious math skills. The work that went into developing these formulas from scratch was intensive. And once set, the formulas were not very flexible, to be honest. A lot of the time would be spent to re-engineer the files for each change requested by subsequent customers. Then if a customer accidentally unlocked and adjusted the Excel file, all the measurement data would have to be, or would be calculated incorrectly. Another limitation of CP's original machine vision camera systems were the manual optical settings. And the initial setup using manual focus is just a cumbersome addition when there are technologies out there that can focus on auto registration routines and auto focus routines, as we talked about already. At CB Industries, they originally they originally reached out to us and specifically to me to discuss new vision systems for their high glass test solutions. The solution that they had created is called the Hudson. We discussed the requirements and the challenges, and there were a number of benefits we were able to offer from Radiance Measurement Portfolio. To replace the machine vision cameras in their system, CP Industry integrated a scientific imaging photometer from Radiant called the Prometric Y. This system 
countered many of the previous system's limitations, of course, addressing the issue with sufficient memory to apply to all inspection tools across all inspection points, on board for a complete and continuous process, an electronic lens that could automatically focus and be controlled by the software without manual intervention. And as CP looked to the augmented reality space or dual plane HUD, this was a massive advantage. And the photometer offered light measurement capability, which had a couple additional benefits, of course. CP no longer needed to include a luminance meter in their test system to ensure the brightness of the test projector. The photometric light measurement was beneficial for identifying ghost images in the test patterns using luminance values, which again was very beneficial when moving to new augmented reality projects. And this capability also equipped CP to meet other potential requirements for HUD qualities like brightness, contrast, uniformity, and others. To replace the machine vision software in their previous system, CP Incorporated Radiant's TrueTest HUD inspection software developed specifically for the HUD testing market. This software can apply complete calculations for each defect category in windshield testing and output all data without interrupting inspection processes. TrueTest HUD offers built-in analyses for distortion, ghosting, and several other defects. We also worked with CP to build out custom calculations that their customers were asking for. This meant no post-process development on their end, no Excel formulas or potential errors, and there was still room for customization if additional calculations or changes were requested. Lastly, it's also important that Rating was able to understand CP customers and their concerns. And the overall testing requirements and needs that they had, our dedicated automotive solutions team was able to work with them to ultimately remove the burden to them to understand the HUD requirements and generally how to implement them. The results of the new vision system speak for themselves. CP was able to shorten the lead time to their systems by 10 weeks, going from a normal 24-week delivery time to 14 weeks from concept to delivery to their customer. Honestly, industry leading. The average repeatability tolerance of CP's vision equipment were originally around 3 to 4 percent, they told us. And with our implementation and our technology, we were able to reduce that to within 0.5 percent using our system. With more automation benefits like onboard processing, continuous data output, and electronic focus, CP was able to dramatically reduce their cycle times per inspection. These automation benefits also eliminated risk of errors caused by manual calculations in Excel, parsing of the data, and manually adjusting camera optics. It's also notable that CP was able to reduce equip the equipment since the imaging photometer performed the work once done by the luminance meter, so bringing one single solution into the mix. These days, CP is spending much less time, money, and stress in effort building hot test systems. And the benefits that they can pass on to their customers, including better data, faster operations, and shorter lead times, are big benefits. The motivation behind all of this for us is to provide the most complete and efficient HUD measurement solution for the industry because it's a huge need that isn't really being addressed in too many other places. Simply put, this is Radian's HUD measurement solution. It contains a photometric imaging system that focuses on geometric measurements and light measurement calculations. It offers an electronic lens for complete control of the optics. That includes the focus and the depth of field through various calibrated apertures. Dedicated software packages that offer built-in analyses to develop, that were developed around industry and OEM requirements for the HUD testing industry. And of course, rating continues to work with various ISO and SAE committees to understand changes within the HUD testing space. And of course, we bring industry and application expertise to the mix. So let's wrap up. Today, we discussed the future of HUD technology, focusing a little bit on AR HUD as it's increasing its significance and the presence of the windshield. Requirements for characterization, the effects of windshields are growing in a number and in various complexities. Traditional machine vision systems just do not meet requirements completely or efficiently, putting the burden on manufacturers to develop these custom solutions with high cost and high support cost. The optimal solution for windshield HUD testing that meets all criteria today and future criteria is truly an out-of-the-box solution. 
Again, something that focuses on the geometric and photometric imaging, something that offers you powerful application-specific software, and working with someone who has the experience to provide you a dedicated solution and ensure your overall success. So I'd like to thank you for joining my presentation today. We're going to move on, I believe, to Q&As, and I'll push it back to Alishva to pass those questions over to me. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Matt, for opening the uh, the conference. That was a pretty solid presentation. Everyone that is listening, we will take, uh, we are running a little bit over schedule, but what we are going to do is we'll take questions for about, I want to say about 10 to 12 minutes, and then we'll move on to the next presentation. I'd encourage you guys to send questions in between now and then. Um, for now, Matt, if you're ready, we'll move straight into Q&A with all the questions that we have waiting for you already. Um, what I will do is I will push some questions out to the audience as well, just for um, visibility, stroke, transparency. And Matt, first question comes from Joseph Polly with Polly Technology. And he says, are there any studies or data such as accident statistics developed by anyone showing safety superiority of HUD equipped vehicles over non HUD? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, of course, you know, the auto industry is all about safety requirements. When they looked at rear view cameras and they made that mandatory basically across the world, it was a safety improvement. When they look at camera monitor systems to remove side mirrors and implement cameras, to deal with blind zones, it's a safety requirement. The idea of bringing head-up display projections into the windshield and giving the driver better awareness of their scene, of course, is a, a safety addition. And right now, there are actually several studies that are being worked on to look at the benefits of head-up displays. Unfortunately, the technology is, is still not quite there, right? We're in our infancy of implementation of augmented reality HUDs. Traditional conventional HUDs, of course, had their benefits of projecting limited information, but there are several working groups in North America and in Europe that I'm aware of that are working towards truly evaluating the benefits of augmented reality HUDs and the safety requirements and benefits that they apply to the driver and the in total sort of vehicle operational uh, standpoint. So. There are things in place. The studies are, are not openly released yet, but you definitely can expect to see uh, more information coming out of those probably towards the end of 2022. Right. All right, Joseph, if you have a follow-up question, welcome to send it in, um, or you're welcome to, again, take things offline with, uh, with Matt as well. We'll move on to uh, a few questions. Uh, all of these questions come from Ellen Lundberg with uh, Lordstown Motors. Um, let's take his first question. This one relates, let me just uh, push it to audience as well. And Matt, the question is, how does the variability of the driver's eye height impact the design of the windshield to minimize ghosting? Right, that's, that, that is a good question. And although I'm not an expert in the windshield design process, or nor do I work for an OEM, of course, the driver's height has a direct implement, implication on, you know, the potential issues that you might see from a ghosting or distortion perspective. And that's why I talked about the fact that there are so many various inspection points that need to be identified when you're evaluating either a HUD projector or the windshield itself. Each position that a typical driver could be in needs to sort of be normalized. So. In inspection processes today, the bare minimum people do is a sort of tall and nominal and short position. The tall position tries to take into account basically the tallest average driver's height. And the normal obviously is uh, the general average and the low is sort of the mean shortest value of a driver. And those points are inspected and you may go left or right and, and create nine or 12 or 15 various inspection points. But each inspection point is trying to accommodate variation in driver height, position, head size, eye position, et cetera, to determine if there are any defects or abnormalities. And when people like the glass manufacturers are starting to bend into their glass and shape their glass, they'll go through thousands of variations of glass manufacturing. One customer might build a hundred or a thousand pieces of glass and inspect them for various test points and find that 
one test position with a specific wedge angle is producing a significant amount of ghosting. And then it's on the windshield manufacturer to go back and work with the OEM to see what adjustments during the bending and shaping process need to be adjusted to reduce ghosting at that specific point. So there are a lot of factors taken into it, but of course, height is is one of the critical ones. Next one, also from Alan, um, and he says, is it possible to integrate the display directly into the windshield without significantly affecting its transmissivity? Ah, that, that's actually a really cool question. Um, we are seeing people look at turning the windshield really into a display, and we're seeing the first passes at that technology, and we sort of refer to it as smart glass in the industry. And we're seeing people do it with, like, your side windows, right, your driver and passenger side windows or the rear windows in the back of the car. At this point in time, people are testing the solution within the space, of course, for full windshields, but that is very early on technology so far. So uh, there are many challenges still to be overcome. So it definitely has an effect of on the transmissivity, and, and people are working to, to look at those corrections. But that's not a technology that is currently available on the market today. It's very much in development at various places. Okay, so those were all the questions we had from Alan. Uh, what I've done as well, guys, I've pulled up uh, Matt's uh, contact details. You'll see them at the bottom of the screen. If for any reason your question goes unanswered today or we um, or you think of something after this meeting is over, you um, can get in touch with Matt and take things offline. We'll take some more questions. Um, right, a couple of uh, comments, I guess. Um, Dave Pans from Belron Carglass. Um, Matt, he feels you delivered a great presentation. Um, another couple of comments relating to the presentation itself, but we'll take some more technical questions. This one comes from um, Ellie with PRTM. And the uh, question is, how are the test specifications being defined to characterize variations in the windshield, Matt? Oh, yeah. So generally, the specifications are driven from OEMs, right? So if you're a Ford or General Motors, you are developing, you know, your vehicle with, you know, several partners, right? So you have your projection partner at the Tier 1 level, you have a glass manufacturer at the Tier 1 level, and, and several Tier 2s that are sort of Tier 2s and Tier 3s that are in the mix. And you're looking at those variations in technologies, and you're basically trying to define what your quality process looks like. And once you've identified, you know, the technology and the output and the desired solution you have, you start working towards creating criteria that is based around this new technology to ensure that high levels of quality are applied. And, and that could be things like variations and calculations of horizontal smile, rotation, could be trapezoidal, horizontal and vertical measurements. You could look at things like variation in image projection, right? So if you're you're on the HUD side, the projector side, you may care that the information is being projected at 2.5 meters or 10 meters or 12 meters within really tight tolerances. The OEMs create the specifications around the variation in the technology that they're bringing to their new vehicles. So they sort of set that criteria. They push it to the Tier 1 suppliers. We work with the Tier 1 suppliers and the OEMs to ensure that those specifications can be met. All right. Thank you for that, Matt. Um, guys, I think what we're going to do is we'll take another three, maybe four questions before we wrap things up, and um, then we will move on to the next presentation. Um, uh, three more questions, guys. Uh, so we'll take the first one. This one comes from Sebastian with uh, with Valio, and he says, what is the accuracy for color measurement? Matt? Yeah, so if that's referring to the accuracy of, let's say, our devices that we talked about today, uh, thanks to some of our patented calibration technology, we look at accuracy out to the third decimal place, so 0 0.002 in CXCY space. When we think about, or better if you do subsequent calibrations, but when you look at color accuracy of the emitting device or how the device is being affected through the windshield, generally OEMs set those tolerances, and thanks to our hardware and software, we can actually bring those tolerances in. And every time we evaluate a projection, whether that's a static image, whether that's a 
full projected color, we can link those test points back to the software around the general accuracy tolerance set by the OEM to ensure that everything is in spec. So with a highly accurate colorimeter and, of course, a detailed software and a detailed specification set from the OEMs, we can ensure that, you know, the development and validation of this technology is met appropriately. All right. Nice one. Anyone else that is sending questions in, guys, I will unfortunately not be able to take too many more questions. However, your questions will be passed on to the team at Radiant and they will be in touch and you guys can then take conversations offline. This question, however, comes from Dave Pans with Belron Car Glass. Whoops, what happened there? <laughs> All right, uh, let's take this one. It says, when a project projection is bad or not okay, does this mean that the glass is rejected or can the projector of the car be recalibrated with some kind of mm -hmm. software? Sorry, do you repeat the question? I think, actually, I just found it. When a projection is yes. bad or not okay, does this mean the glass is rejected or can the projector of the car be recalibrated with some kind of software? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's an interesting question. So we work with tier one suppliers on the projector side as well as OEMs to implement processes where we can calibrate the windshield and the HUD. So if you imagine, you know, at a finalized vehicle implementation, you have your windshield installed, you have your HUD projector installed, and when those two technologies come together, there is offsets like distortion. We can actually acquire the distortion points and we can run matrix corrections and we can help push new matrix calibration to the HUD projector to help with the overall projection positions to ensure that those two types of technology create a visually pleasing end result. And we can do these calibrations at the tier one projector side, at the tier two side with the PGU, and of course, uh, at the end of line for the OEM's manufacturing process. All right, cool. So guys, we are now going to take the final question. This one comes from Bogdan with uh, Continental uh, Automotive and he says, can the projection distance be measured with the software? Yeah, it can. So we actually have created a calibrated routine that we call virtual image distance. So what that does is using our hardware and our software, we're able to determine within a couple percent the projection distance. So we can tell you if your projection's at two and a half meters, and we can tell you if your projection's at 10 or 12 meters with a high level of repeatable accuracy. So this is something that's very unique to our platform. Cool, all right. Because I, I feel, Matt, that was a short and sweet answer, we, we probably can't take one more, right? Um, it'll take us to the top of the hour and then we'll wrap things up. This one comes from Mercedes-Benz, um, gentleman asking the question, his name's Constantine. And he says, is it possible to use different evaluation algorithms within your software, especially regarding ghosting stroke distortions? Yeah, so one of the things that's really great about Radiant is that we are always open to configurations to our platform. So although I didn't run through all the various distortion or ghosting algorithms that exist in our software, they are all customizable. So when you open up our software and you select a specific analysis, it gives you a set of tools and configurations to adjust within that analysis to really meet the extensive changes that we see from OEM to OEM or tier one to tier one supplier within the industry. When it comes to different projection points, shapes, or patterns, these can all be accommodated. And if there are unique implementations of algorithms that need to be adjusted, Radian also has a dedicated team to sort of work with our customer base to bring those algorithms into our software to provide unique solutions to the end user. Brilliant. All right, guys. So thank you, Matt, for <laughs> building all those questions. For anyone else uh, whose question I'm afraid we could not take today, I have once again pulled up Matt's uh, contact details on your screen. I would, uh, on behalf of Matt, encourage everyone to drop him a line and you guys can take your questions offline. I would like to thank Matt, yourself, um, Matt's colleague, Shana, Shana, and the rest of the Radiant team for, um, for, of course, supporting the event and, of course, being the keynote speakers. Thanks, Matt. Any final words? Yeah, appreciate everyone's time. I look forward to potentially talking to you more offline and uh, hopefully Radiant is able to work with you guys in various aspects.